For some, it is necessary occasionally to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And that getaway uh, takes various forms. You and I can get away from the hustle and bustle of life by trying to stay home and do things that we normally would not do. Normally. I can share with you. It's easier for me to do that than to ask a friend of mine by the name of Gregory to do this because Gregory wouldn't have much to say, poor kid. <clears throat> he knows, he's here. I'm not even looking at him. You always talk about people whom you think are absent anyway. <laughs> Jokes. <clears throat> you get away, you seclude yourself. The outside world gets very noisy and you need some quiet and time. Another form of that is desert experience, and particularly in the Eastern world. Mind you, uh, the land of Jesus' birth and that whole area is not Western, it's Eastern. That's where Christianity started first, in the East, not in the West. When people say that this is a Western religion, I'll say, well, that's a lack of history, knowledge, and <clears throat> geography. The Eastern world, Jesus lived in the East. I told you that one time, just to get your attention, about the Irishman who thought that his son was doing something uh, so absolutely marvelous that he wanted the whole world to applaud. <clears throat> and that was good. I mean, every, every father is proud of their children. <clears throat> so he met his, his friend, a rabbi, whose name happened to be Abraham, and he said, Abraham, he says, my son is going to become a priest. <clears throat> and Abraham wasn't phased at all by that. <clears throat> I've said this joke so many times that the words just come out. No. It, there's a point in this. <clears throat> and then he said, you don't understand, Abraham. You're not very impressed by this, but you know, my son could become a monsignor. That's another little stage higher, and it's an honor, and he could become a bishop, and Abraham would go, you know, very nonchalantly, so what? So what? Well, if he's a bishop and if he takes care of his diocese well, they may give him some administrative responsibilities over a whole area, and that's called an archdiocese, and then my son will become an archbishop, and Abraham goes, archbishop, so what? You know, someday they may make my son a cardinal. And he thought this was going to be it, and Abraham is going to be very excited. And so Abraham responds, cardinal? So what? By this time, Pat was getting red in the face. <clears throat> oh, and he said to me, he says, you know, there is a stage higher than that. And if my son does a good job in the church, they may make him a cardinal. And he was all excited, etc. And Abraham says, Cardinal, so what? And by this time, Pat was getting a little upset. And he said, you know, Abraham, he says, who do you think my son is, Jesus Christ? And Abraham said, no, 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 that's one of our boys. <clears throat> that's one of our boys. The desert experience is an experience in those places where there is a desert, where there is dryness, where the soil is arid. Nice term, I like that term, arid. Very little grows, if anything. <clears throat> and the desert was a place where people would go to. Now, in the east, there are also many places, I can refer to this one, the north of India has the highest mountains in the world, the Himalayas. <clears throat> 29,000 some feet. And when they want to get away from the world, they go and live on mountaintop experiences. Not all the way to the top, but six, seven, eight thousand feet. They live in caves. That's their desert experience. That's their way to get away from the world and the noise and the hustle and the bustle and to be in contact with God. 
It's a nice experience. Nowadays we do that with retreats. A retreat is a desert experience. To get away from the world to some secluded place, you cut off from the world so that you can spend more time reflecting on the wonders that God has given us and the spiritual growth that can be enabled by the experience. That's a retreat. Jesus went to the desert. John the Baptist went to the desert. Not just a manner of speech, it was actually being there in the desert. And when he was in the desert, the devil has no respect for persons, son of God or not. The desert tempted Jesus. Loneliness can do some things to our lives that work just the opposite of what we intend. <clears throat> we can either, in a desert experience, we can, we can either grow closer to God or allow the devil to take over and get further away from God. Take your choice. <clears throat> I hope it's the former. Because the devil is not a respecter of persons. Think about it yourself. Been thinking about it during the week. That's when the homily starts. On a Monday, I start reading and reflecting, and then by Saturday, it's there. And I want to share. The devil is real. It's not just an old-fashioned concept of evil. It's real. There is an evil spirit. Don't let anyone tell you that's old-fashioned. That's the devil saying that. <laughs> the devil is real. If the devil tempts Jesus, has tempted Jesus, you and I are small fish in the ocean. How many ways that the devil tries to exercise power over us? When you are not in love with your spouse as he used to be, it's the devil who's trying to separate the two. And everything that you say yes, your spouse says no. And the other way around. It's possible too that when your kids are most unmanageable, it's possible. I don't try to put everything on the devil's name now, you know. We have, you and I have some part in this too. It's possible that the evil one is trying to turn you away from something good. That's what it is. And the evil one was trying to turn Jesus away from something good. His loyalty to his heavenly Father. I will give you all the lands of the earth. I will give, turn these stones into bread. You'll have enough food. Why are you going through this problem in the desert? Blah, 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 blah. The devil has the words. The devil has the words. As you reflect on your own life, some of the most pleasurably promising things are not the things that are good. They could be things that are evil, and the seed could be planted by the devil. Amen. <laughs>